Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Sorry for the absence. Um, I have been doing live streams. In fact, it's a beanie day. Those of you who watch the live streams already know why. Uh, yeah, I got a little lazy. Anyways, um, so I have been working on a big project. Um, I am currently 28 thousand words into it and that's just the first chapter it's going to be a long haul so if you're interested there's going to be a daily live streams saturday through tuesday and then regular videos wednesday thursday and friday so you'll have content every day um, i'll even be doing some live streams where i'll just be reading you guys can come and read along with me i won't be reading out loud so just to clear up any confusion there will be you know streams where all i'm doing is sitting there reading and that's by request. So um, if you think that's weird, I ain't got anything to do with it. People ask me to do it. And I think it comes down to, you know, people just wanting someone else to chill out and read with. Uh, that could be it. I'm not sure. Um, I don't personally watch reading vlogs, but if you guys want to watch it, I have them for you. Anywho, so today we are talking about Blue Skinned Gods by S.J. Sindhu. Uh, this is a book about a young boy um, who is who has blue skin and is supposed to be the tenth and final reincarnation of Vishnu. Um, the book starts off when the boy is very young, preteen, I think, into teenager, and it follows this boy Kalki. Um, that's his name. I know there's God Kalki, that, but anyways, it follows this boy. He has to go through. Uh, three trials to prove that he is a god, um, and it. I don't want to say too much about this, but I will. I, I do want to preface this review with: do not read any of the reviews on Goodreads. They will spoil you. They spoiled me. Unfortunately, there is a. I don't know. It's a major twist, but there's a twist uh, on the, in the last third of the book. Um, that I definitely wouldn't have seen coming um, had I not read the reviews. I don't know why I did, but I did. Um, I enjoyed this book throughout. Um, it's one of my favorites of the year. Um, and yes, my best of the year list will be up hopefully on Friday. You're getting a video on Friday no matter what it is, but probably the best of the year. And they won't be numbered. It'll just be me telling you what um, what I loved this year. And this will be this book will be on that list. Um, one of my favorite characters in here is Lechman, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I also like Rupa. Uh, the, there were so many great characters. The, uh, the boy's father was another one. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. Uh, but this story, it, it had notes of the Kite Runner in it without the, uh, without the sexual abuse. Um, in fact, I don't think there are too other than, you know, organized religion and trauma based on religion, there aren't too many triggers in, in this one. Um, it is a very sad story. Uh, and several parts had me in tears, um, absolutely broke me just like the Kite Runner did. And I only, I'm not, I'm not you know, comparing these two because of the author's ethnicity, I'm comparing these two because they are very much alike. Um, they're both coming of age stories, and yes, they are not American stories, um, but he does travel, and this one, Kalki, does travel to America, and he enters this very weird underground music scene, and that was by far my favorite part of the book, seeing how various different people had, had used this little boy throughout his life for their own own financial and even spiritual gain. Um, he's just been walked over and used his entire life. Uh, and I, I thought that was it, was, it was a great theme. There is a heavy theme of the gullibility of the religious. I don't care if you're spiritual, I don't care what you believe in, but there is a heavy theme of the gullibility of the type of people who are religious extremists or just religious to, you know, to a fault, I would guess it, I would say. Um, people who believe anything when they're told if it fits into their own narrative and their own agenda. Um, so this is an important book just based on that. Um, there, I think my favorite scene in the entire book is toward the end on the stage when everything just finally comes to a head and uh, Kalki's had enough. And that scene right there, I thought it was going to end completely differently because of the tone of the rest of the book, but I was glad to see it went where it went. Uh, Blue Skinned Gods, uh, I, I picked this one up 
because it said it had something to do with the uh, New York uh, underground music scene, and I got that, but the majority of the book, if you read the description, that doesn't happen until much, much later. It's probably the last third of the book, and I'm surprised they put it in there, but I'm glad they did, or else I wouldn't have read it. Um, I got this one on Scribe. I listened to this one on Scribe. I already got the hardcover ordered, and it's on its way. Um, I do that with all the books that I enjoy on Scribe, and if you'd like to try it on Scribe, there's a link down there in the doobly-doo. You get a free month, and my kids get a free month. Um, you guys have been spectacular. They, they have uh, numerous free months to go, so I appreciate everyone who has done this so far. But yeah, if you want to, you can cancel it um, as soon as you get it. I think it's still good for the entire month if you want to check it out. If you do check it out, definitely check out this audiobook for Blue Skin Gods. The narrator was absolute perfection. It's a fantastic story. It's getting my highest possible recommendation. But if you read Blue Skin Gods by S.J. Sindhu, if you have, let me know down there in the doobly-doo whether or not you loved it, you hated it, you felt meh about it, but if you felt any of those things, tell me in detail so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!